Disaster saves are always great. And today we're looking at a democratic Poland. Haven't seen many of those before. The person who sent this in writes he tried to build a nice democratic Poland that tried to save everybody without being aggressive. So he tried to stop Germany by rushing the April constitution towards protect Czechoslovakia and also taking some focuses from the sanation right, blah, 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 blah. Ignored most of the industry. That's always a good idea. Yeah, sure. And uh, everything went well until Czechoslovakia decided to give Germany the Sudetenland despite being protected by me, only to be attacked a couple of months later. So yeah, that's great. The Czechs quickly fell and the alliance now includes Romania, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Latvia, Lithuania, Finland and Sweden. And as you can see on the map, Things are not going well here. But that's not all. We would have been able to hold the line until the Allies declared on Germany just fine if two things didn't happen. Hungary refused to join the Alliance and join the Axis instead. Yeah, I can I can tell that can be a problem. And two, the Soviet Union decided to join the fray and declared war on my ally Latvia. So you're outnumbered and outgunned. You're being destroyed from both sides. Let's see if we can fix that, shall we? Let's see if we can fix that. It's on Iron Man and historical focus is so can't be that wild. Oh boy, okay, first off, let's stop this offensive. There we go, let's stop that offensive. Good news, bad news. Good news, you've got a lot of friends. Bad news, none of those friends really matters. I am afraid we'll have to peel this back to just this circle around Warsaw, really. I don't think I can hold more than that because eventually you will crumble. You have nothing on the Soviet border, so that is just going to get crushed. Best I can do for you, and I recommend you do this as well if you find yourself in a situation like that, is fall back to defensive terrain. In this case, I'd say this river near Breslitovsk, maybe? But considering the length of the front line and the amount of enemies you have, let's condense it even further and we're just gonna fall back to the Vistula. We hold the line with Germany where it is now and every other place pulls back to the Vistula. So we'll try to hold the line between Krakow and this river here, the Vistula. I sit along Warsaw, down to Radom. Yeah, we're just gonna create a nice little comfort comfortable bubble of defenses. Your air force is gone, so I'm gonna delete it. It's a waste of manpower currently. How's your production looking? Ah, so air force. Yeah, let's just ignore that for now. We're making artillery, we're making guns. We don't have any steel as expected. Uh, we're making toad AA, that's good. We'll adjust this in a bit, I think. We'll see what we can do. We're gonna adjust this in a bit. What else can we do up here? Need a little bit of stability, so I'm going to, ooh, the king of the castle. No, uh, we're gonna hire this guy. He seems to be a good man. 10% stability and acceptance of democratic diplomacy. Military high command, nothing special here. Material designer, uh, volunteer only. Yeah, we're gonna lose a lot of manpower. So let's go up to limited conscription right away. Suck the provinces dry if whatever manpower we still can. Speaking of that, let's let's queue up as much manpower as we can. That will draw them all out of these provinces and we will lose all of those provinces. But for the time being, at least we'll have the manpower. <laughs> a little bit of a stockpile that we can dump back out later. High priority on reinforcements and garrisons. The divisions, let's look at the army. You're all using the basic infantry division and this is it. Okay, so good division, but okay, I'll give you a little but here. Your stockpiles of equipment are not the best. So one, you have too many divisions for your equipment but let's gloss over that. It's a good division for a frontline unit, but you don't have the industry to back up this unit. What do I mean by that? You have nothing but infantry, nothing but this line infantry. That is not great for attacking. If you want to attack, you need to design shock troops along with this or have a massive industry and manpower pool that can support the endless grinding action this unit will have to do to win. If you want shock troops, design something like this. Not great, maybe even this. Very expensive in the artillery department, but it gets the job done. Ideally, you would actually use tanks instead, but I'm not going to. It's a little late. Or motorized, where you replace all of these things by their motorized variants. Okay? Okay, so for the time being, we're gonna first try to pull back and see what we can do. Officer Corps, bold attack, good. Professional Officer Corps is not bad, but I would instead try for Relief of Command. It's much better considering you're democratic. Way more army experience game, way cheaper army advisors, and all you're really lacking is a 5% cost reduction in land doctrine, not that great, and daily command power gain. I'm gonna keep Professional Officer Corps now since we are at war and the daily command power gain is gonna be useful for last stance, but Relief of 
the command during peacetime is way better. And then Spirit of Division command. I'm going to go with Static Warfare until we can um, stabilize this a little bit. I'm going to slow the game down and see if we can get the army to redeploy in a somewhat orderly fashion. Speedy, but orderly. I'm going to hold on to as much of this as we can, really. I'm manually trying to extricate as many of these units as we can. Some of them will be too far off, uh, and I, I simply won't be able to salvage them. Oh, that brings me to research. I almost skipped that. Improved computing machine. Not great. This is a bit of a trap. By the time you're done researching these, the extra speed won't matter. Let's instead look at... Okay, so this is good. You've got the infantry stuff. You've got most of the artillery stuff, but I'm going to grab more of it. So you're pretty much up to date. So what I'm going to do is focus now on excavation, because we will not have a lot of resources for much of this game. And what we do have, I want to make the most out of, as well as updating our artillery and AA industry. Yeah, everything else looks okay. Oh, focuses as well. You are building factories in Warsaw, Kielce, and Plok. We are going to lose Plok. We are going to lose... Where is it? Kiel Kielce? I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh no, we're going to hold on to Kiel Kielce, whatever this place is. Eh, all right, I'll, I'll let it run. I'll let it run. I'm going to pause your mills. I'm going to go with infrastructure so we can get as much steel out of the limited territories we still hold. Because we will get nothing else for a while until we're able to push out into Katowice and eventually link up with the sea again. We will need all the resources we can get on our own. When I see an opportunity here, I have to take it. I see very weak Italian units. I'm going to try and push them out just a tile. If I can push to Katowice now, I might end up risking too much, but I want to try to push for Katowice. Pinning attack there. Okay, so we've done what we... Uh, set out to do now to reinforce the position hold the last stand if we have to this is pretty much the ideal well ideal <clears throat> none of this is ideal but this is what i want to hold until i can get my breath we have a decent amount of industry in the provinces we still hold we have enough victory points not to capitulate and we have a reasonably sized army with a reasonable amount of oh boy reasonable amount of manpower what we now it's guns, basic equipment, and resources. Fortunately, if we can hold on to counterfeits, we have steel and aluminum. Krakow offers us more steel and oil, and Kielce offers us steel. So we have basic resources. Now we just have to hold on to this line for as long as possible. So keep redeploying all the units. I think all of my troops are almost back to this defensive line. I need a whole bunch of guns. I need manpower. What I don't need that much of, considering this is a purely defensive operation, is artillery for now. So what I'm going to do, and it might seem a little uh, weird, is remove this artillery piece. It will still be a competent defense. Oh, I'm going to also use the remove the recon. So I'm going to dumb this division down a bit. It's no longer my favorite unit, but for purely defensive operations, this will be fine, at least until we are able to replenish our equipment stockpiles. This will require less artillery, less support equipment. Our lack of equipment will not be as catastrophic. Now we just have to dig in and hold Hold. Hold until relieved. Hopefully, the Soviets and the Germans will eventually go to war. At least the Germans will start kicking other people in the shin, giving us a little bit of room to breathe. So mostly green bubbles. What I fear is that Germans will consistently attack a single position. All right, take all the guns you have. So they will try to consistently attack a single point, like Katowice is fairly exposed or the province above Katowice, and eventually wear the position down by incessant attacks. Uh, if that happens, not much I can do about it, but cycle units in and out. With enough micro, I can can hold this probably yeah fortunately we have a fairly large army it looks like we'll be able to hold these positions reasonably well i'm going to try and concentrate as much of my force under generals with very favorable traits so some of these guys won't actually be commanding a whole lot of units and we'll slowly build back up from this not ideal but we can survive if not thrive also i want to applaud you you want superior firepower good thinking integrated support and shock and awe good combination. We can work with this. Once we have these factories, which may or may not benefit us all that much, I'm going to pan over here. This one is what we want, but we need to be 60% surrendered. We will be once the Germans have walked all the way to where they need to go. We are grabbing this. This will give us off-map factories. Great. A little bit of convoys. Sure, but 10,000 Polish guns. 10,000 guns. That is a drop in a bucket, but for division reinforcements, the units we have in the field, that is just about enough to equip every soldier we have currently deployed with a rifle. And that means our defenses hold. So that is going to be very important. While I wait for that, I'm going to create an agency because having spies also makes the defense a lot easier. You can use spies in the provinces connected to the front line to reduce the enemy's planning bonus. A reduced planning bonus makes the enemy weaker. We want the 
Germans to be weak. There he goes, Lithuania. Bye bye. All right, with the territories now captured, I'm going to delete all the divisions from the queue, at least until we have what we have in a field equipped. And that gives us half a million in manpower with more mobilizing. Not great, but it will do for now. So I won't need to go up to another conscription law just yet. Instead, I think I'll replace Joseph Haller here, my war industrialist, with somebody else who might be a little more useful. Let's grab the noble bureaucrat. Stability is always something I want. So all we have to do now is survive and endure the constant effect offensives. Some positions will be constantly under attack and it's going to be dangerous, but as long as we cycle units and hit the occasional last stand, we should be fine. Well, this is not a position you want to find yourself in. You know, look look at the map. This, this is um, literally stuck between a rock and a hard place, but it's fine-ish. I guess. Now let's start rolling out some spies. When you put a spy in an area like this or this or this that borders the front line, once he gets his spy network up, the higher the spy network, the lower the enemy's preparation or planning bonus, all the way up to the maximum level of spy network, it will completely wipe out the enemy planning bonus. So that effectively reduces their attack by 10%. So the Germans have done their thing and declared war on Belgium, who have joined our faction. But fortunately, the UK also uh, honored their guarantee of independence, I guess. Oh, well, now you've done it, Germany. You're now at war with the Mijdemurja and the allies. All right. So all we have to do is survive. There come my free guns. So gun wise, we're not that poorly off anymore. All right. I'm going to grab the steel from Katowice, then focus probably on the industry. Uh, once the industry is sorted out, I'm going to prepare for the next war, grab some bonuses here and there, and we'll eventually start snaking our way to victory. I'm also training as many divisions as I can. It's going to take a while, but we will eventually get some troops out into the field to really shore up our defenses and prepare for our counterattack. And I'm also fairly confident Finland's gonna die. Actually, I have enough exile armies now to get a field marshal on, on the job. Right, let's start making armor trains. Maybe they won't bomb them as much. The rest of my production's going fine. I'm gonna start working on fighters as soon as I research some decent ones. If only just to stop the bombing a little bit. Holy cow, the Soviets just nave- what? The Soviets just naval invaded Belgium. Oh, that's going to kill Belgium. Actually, no, I take that back. Belgium's dealing with this fairly well. Oh, another Soviet naval invasion. I wonder how many of these they'll throw at Belgium before giving up because they're losing. I'm going to start work on my shock troops. These are very much on a budget. So just motorized infantry with motorized artillery. They're about 30 width. Not great. Not terrible. Support artillery. Support AA. Support engine. Engineers, Fairly expensive, but uh, hopefully these guys will be able to pack a bit of a punch and allow me to get some work done. Let's also see if I can add my artillery back to my infantry. Can I afford to? I can afford to, so I'm going to. I'm also expecting Greece to do fairly well as long as Bulgaria doesn't join. And Bulgaria still hasn't joined anyone. Who knows? Germany might actually be overstretched because they've still not declared war on Denmark or Norway. Oh, I've finished my railway gun. Let's also deploy that so Somewhere. I should probably build a second so I have perfect coverage. Now I'm gonna use Plan West here to grab the Prussian Guard. That's three divisions and four divisions from Sudeten Mountaineers. In a bit. I don't need them just yet. What I would also like to grab is the Long Push Home. This is gonna be incredibly valuable when I do start my counterattack. 20% attack on core territory? That's not nothing. All right, so I have our trucks. Who is the most attack-focused person we have in our own army? Hmm. Most of these guys are foreigners. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. I just don't want to use these guys because they won't stick around and they're better served elsewhere. Kopanski will do. And I'm thinking an assault up north was Danzig, either on the left or the right side of the river so I can use the river as a... Uh, part of a wall, really. I'm also going to get rid of static warfare and switch out to smoke and fire when my attacks do begin, because by now I don't need the extra entrenchment anymore. I have enough divisions. They're strong enough. Germany's distracted. The extra breakthrough, however, is going to be very valuable when I try to punch out. Flexible organization is also good if you want more speed. I think I want more breakthrough. All right, let's grab the long push home. My generals have what they need. Ideally, I'd get a little bit more infantry to cover my flanks because my front line is going to get a little bit longer. So a couple more divisions. I am at the edge of what my supply lines or my, my manpower 
this pool can provide. But once I recover, some of my land will be fine. Yeah, I just hope these motorized pack enough of a punch. I'm also researching logistics because even though we're fighting in Europe, these rather large divisions require quite a bit of supply. So this requires a bit of supply. And having those logistics companies reduces the amount of supply these guys use. They use less fuel. It's just an overall good idea to get these guys logistics companies because these are hungry animals. All right, we have the long push home. That gives us, where is it? 20% extra attack for what, a year? Yeah, about a year. We're going to make this happen. As far as focuses go, not really sure what I want from this now. Uh, the extra troops, I guess, from these focuses. And I'm going to start pushing. So motorized are already pushing out. And now it's just a matter of trucking to Danzig and the other motorized. See if we can make the corridor a little bit wider. The infantry is going to constantly redeploy to try and follow behind. I'm going to get 12 more divisions out if I can to quickly reinforce the infantry. So I might need more divisions because I, I really don't want to lose what I have in our moment of victory. And we get going. Germany is going to redeploy to try and stop us, but the motorized is faster, it's better, it's stronger. We should be able to push out and the infantry just needs to constantly redeploy and make sure no gaps fall here. Okay, so we've reached the coastline. I'm not going to push into Konigsberg because I, I can't take it. The unit's too weak and I'm at the edge of my supply line. But if I have the opportunity, I'm going to try and take Danzig. If I can take Danzig, I... Ah, uh, no. No, no. Is there any supply hubs nearby I can use? Yeah. Once this thing comes online, I'll be in a position to strike at Danzig and maybe even Konigsberg. So until that time, just hold and let's not do anything stupid. So I think with this, we've uh, made a good first push. Take Danzig. Okay, we've taken Danzig. Good. That means our fleet is going to come home from England. Go to port in Danzig. This is a good first move. Really good first move. And the Germans aren't attacking extensively because they can't. They're just so overextended. All we had to do was survive. I withdrew my fleet instant Soviet naval invasion in Belgium. That said, I don't think I need to worry about it too much. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try and break through here. Break through and establish a new front line. Also make sure the railways are up to date. Everything needs to be the highest level possible. I want supplies to flow freely. Polish military needs all the supply it can get right now. Oh, I love this. This is a big brain move and I love it. All right, just make sure the infantry redeploys as needed so my trucks don't get cut off. Off. I take Siedlce, whatever this place is. It has a supply hub, so I definitely need and want it. And I think I'll have the Jip. I've got the Germans cut off effectively. Good. And now I'm going to use the motorized to clean house here. Just push along the coast, I'm thinking. Let this be a message to all future tyrants. Don't oh, fuck with Poland. What I'm going to try here is encircle these ports if I can't push the units out just easily. Just encircle the port, destroy the units, move on. Meanwhile, the Navy has taken up station, but it's not strong enough to provide naval superiority. I'm going to start peeling these volunteers or these exile divisions away from their current positions and use them as port guards. It seems like a sensible thing to do. Ports are vital if I leave them and I get naval invaded. Well, it would not be a good look considering how I yell at people whenever they don't guard their ports. Just like that, we have Danzig. Well, no, not Danzig. Konigsberg surrounded and now we destroy the units that are in there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It does really feel like the Germans are pushed to the breaking point already. Good. These guys are all trapped. I'll clean them up in a bit. And again, if you can't take the port, just encircle the port, then destroy the units there. Yeah, either the AI's turned itself off or it's just completely overtasked and it has no idea what to do anymore. So we've liberated most of Lithuania, most of Latvia. Good. Just like that, we've cut the remaining pocket here off from the last port. And what I'm going to do now is just push down, destroy all those units. Make sure the ports are guarded, of course, but now I just need to destroy the encircled Germans and I have won. Oh, look, Soviet naval invasion. Good thing I have troops here, actually, because, you know, the AI loves their damn naval invasions. All right, that's a nice uh, cleanup job, I'd say. That is pretty much all of it cleaned up. The Soviet border is still a bit of a risk now. Uh, there's not a lot of Soviet troops here because they're still responding. I'm playing on a relatively low speed using fast units. So the Soviet Union is going to stack this border 
once it realizes it's actually got an enemy here now instead of the Germans. Fortunately, they're a bit busy in Iran, but that won't last. Germany has taken quite the beating here, so they're up to 5.6 million casualties. Oh look, a naval invasion. How unexpected. Fortunately, I have my ports guarded. I'm just gonna slowly whittle down the German and the rest of the Axis forces as I retake my country. The rest of this video might not be as flashy as this early push. It's gonna be very methodical because I have two massive fronts I need to take care of. I still need to mass troops on the German border because even though they're weak, they're still stronger than I am. And... Yeah, the Soviets. Soviets are way tougher than me, mostly because they've not been bleeding themselves dry against my front line like everybody else has. Yeah, the downside of this massively expanded territory is that the front also has expanded massively. Belgium's in my faction, but I can kick them. If I kick them, they'll probably join the Allies. Would that then call the Allies in against the Soviet Union? Because that would be great for me. That would be very great for me. But do I want to risk it? I think I kind of do. You know, the Belgians aren't really doing all that much for me. So I'm going to kick Belgium from my faction. And I'm pretty sure it will join the Allies soon. And when they do, that's going to bring the Allies in against the Soviets. And that will make me a happy man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I have baited the allies into going to war with the Soviets as well. All right, so that's going to be helpful. Definitely going to be helpful. Looks like I'll be going to service by requirement after all. Not what I would have liked, but we'll have to do it. I'm also running low on artillery. I'm making a lot of it, but I just don't have any tungsten. All right, little encirclement is better than no encirclement. Let's try and destroy that then. We're definitely pushing out and we're holding everywhere else. It's just a very slow process with the allies not really willing to do anything, it seems. A couple more of these encirclements and we'll be done. Well, not exactly done, but you know, I have to do something to keep you guys entertained while I dismantle the Third Reich. Well, there goes Tokyo. At least the USA is doing something. Oh yeah, they're they're definitely doing something. Oh man, as I'm trying to free more and more of my territory, the line just gets so thin to the point that it, it's getting a little a little comical. Big US, no, sorry, UK naval invasion. Let's um let's make sure they don't beat us to Berlin. I at least want to sit on Berlin when this peace deal fires. As long as I don't get massively overwhelmed by Soviet troops in the east, the line will hold. The line must hold. Uh oh, is the line gonna hold? Oh, it might not let's make that a little cleaner here ay -ay -ay, ay -ay -ay. Well, at least polish troops are in berlin we are in berlin the fall of berlin is a thing all right let's let's take dresden as well while we're here if we can just gotta gotta hurry gotta hurry this is getting this is getting super duper risky and i really i just don't have the troops to man this gigantic border see if i can link up with the uk naval invasion if i can do that maybe i can do some actual damage here Ooh, we may well be able to do some actual damage here all right now to destroy these german troops and get the hell out of here and done all right we've actually linked up with the uk now we just need to push south at least the front line will actually start getting a little shorter as we do this because uh my front's just stupid long right now also decided to send a military attaché to the uk so i can at least see where they're deploying their troops what i thought was a huge Huge naval invasion is large in territory, but not large in troops. So this is actually not as strong as it looks, but it serves as enough of a destroy. Why is the like the American AI always does this? It just stacks bunches of troops somewhere, doesn't actually use them effectively. Anyway, this should serve as enough of a distraction to kill what's left of the German army. Soviets, meanwhile, yeah, they're not really a threat. They're just not attacking. If they started really attacking me, I would be in a world of hurt. So I'm very fortunate that they're not actually doing that. I would be in uh, quite a bit of pain if they if they were. You know, when this is done, I'll need a trip to the chiropractor to fix my back. It really, really hurts from carrying the AI like this. I'm not in a position to do the knockout blow to Germany because it would overextend me too much. So I'm just stuck here slowly cutting them to bits, bit by bit. And it's so annoying. This is grindingly, tediously slow, but once Germany falls, I just need to swing my army 
to the east and I can grind the Soviets into dust. The downside is I've just discovered I can't do a collaboration government on the Soviets because I'm democratic, which is annoying. So I have a very, very long walk ahead of me. To facilitate things, I've just started making some close air support. At least I'll have a little bit of cast overhead. It's done. Oh, the Germans have capped. All right, I will take what I want now, make the Polish borders look a little nicer, and then make sure my uh, dear friends and colleagues here get their stuff back, because, you know, what they have did to my boy, Czechoslovakia, that's uh, it's not cool. I've also just noticed that there's no Romania in here. Romania is considered a defeated nation, but you're supposed to be in... And Turkey's also a defeated nation. What? I'll see through that in a minute. Okay. Uh, so Finland's no longer my friend. W what? So, looking at this, I lost all of my allies. Turkey's been destroyed. They just have... What the hell? So the allies just ate everyone in my faction? Is, is that what happened here? Like, Romania was in my faction. Yugoslavia was in my faction. Turkey was in my faction. And so was Finland. So all of these countries just got like, destroyed? And why is Germany still in the Axis? Along with the Italian Socialist Republic. The hell? All right, since the allies are now invading everywhere and they might eat more of my allies, I'm just gonna start an attack. Oh, that seems to be doing the job quite well. Let's just do this. Don't expect any more clever and fancy maneuvers. I'm just gonna grind them into dust. I thought I was so damn clever that I got the allies involved against the Axis. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> got the allies involved against the Soviets and it's gonna turn out to be a mistake because the allies are gobbling up all this Soviet land. They've eaten like a quarter of my allies as well. Oh, I'm annoyed. Annoyingly, it feels like the allies are getting all of the occupation here. And they're getting a whole lot of war participation for not really doing a whole lot. So, kind of annoyed. Poles have bled here. Not Americans, not Germans. It have been Pol- What have I- Oh boy, I've collected a lot of railway <laughs> Oops. And they're- Wow, the Soviets have capped. <gasps> Japan invaded from the other side. Yes, that has to be it. All right, I'm not going to be greedy, but I'm going to restore my Baltic brothers here. So, I think I'll, I'll be very, very concerned conservative here. All right, with that, we're, uh, what? Wait, what? Okay, so, um, as far as peace deals go, um, <laughs> Stalin survived in Gorky, Kirov, and Udmurtia, surrounded by <laughs> the Russian Federation, who lost Kazakhstan. That's about it, really. They lost Ukraine, some parts of it, at least. They lost Belarus. Polish, Estonia is a thing, but he gets to be free once he's learned his lesson. All in all, horrible peace deal. Relatively fun experience playing this, uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm done here. I'm pretty sure I'm done here. I don't want to touch this world with the 10-foot pole. So the now democratic Germany under Konrad Adenauer has declared war on the remains of the Soviet Union and is still on the Axis, along with Italy and Mussolini, who own Zara and Istria, and that's it. Why is this game so weird? Why does this game just nothing make sense anymore? Anyway, we came out of this on top. We managed to salvage Czechoslovakia, Latvia, and Lithuania, as well as Sweden and Romania. We lost our dear friends in Turkey and Finland. All in all, we paid a steep price, but we have achieved victory yet again. This goes to show you Poland is not yet lost. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll enjoy this next one too. See ya. And I also want to give a big, big thank you to all of our channel members. Their names are on screen right now. And uh, thanks to these people, I am able to continue to do what I do. And for those of you who are interested in helping this channel out and want to see yourself included in the videos uh, from a few videos in the future, every one of the members will have a division named after them. If that is something you would like to see, consider pressing the join button down there next to the subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. But that's it for me.